And then we have this interesting article, courtesy of the New York Times, that really irked me, just more so because of the title alone. I think I was meant to cover it in another live stream, but I'll cover it today in the podcast. And the title of the New York Times article is this, would you date a podcast bro? Their reputations have caught up with them by a writer called Gina Severus. And essentially it's a hit piece on people like myself, um, guys who decide to buy a microphone, rant into it and share our thoughts and feelings with the world. But obviously it's also kind of a hit piece at those more, what you'd say, divisive types like the Andrew Tates and the Fresh and Fits and all these other guys in the sort of manosphere space who essentially try to inform, inspire and maybe direct young men. And for whatever reason, the society we live in at the moment looks at young men as like, you know, um, little mini ISIS soldiers or Mujahideen or flipping, you know, um, Taliban or, I don't know, serial killers. I don't know what people think people with podcasts do, but for whatever reason, society has deemed them to be the most dangerous people in the world. Like, that's why I said, you know, kind of, you know, with my tongue firmly planted in my cheek, that that video of those kids sitting in a cafe and the car crashes into the window, that is obviously a, to me, at the time um a representation of podcasting being the most dangerous job in the world but it clearly is because you know you could say you could say a little off-handed comment on a podcast it gets clipped and shared on social media and suddenly people are destroying you or basically you know judging you of that one little soundbite without any sort of context so it can really make or break your career i understand that but i just feel like the premise of this is really annoying because initially in the title it says podcast bro as if this affliction only affects men and i think podcasting in general especially the the more like um uh the more questionable side of things where, where people just go in and just say anything it affects both sides of the you know, of the gender aisle like it's not discriminatory in that way if you put a microphone or a camera in front of anybody and you give them the opportunity to say what they actually want to say eventually they're going to fumble over what they're saying and say some nonsense it just is what it is and i've seen many a clips online of women getting on podcasts and saying the most d dumbest things i've ever heard in my entire life but you let people rock because guess what podcasts are all subjective you know you can listen to what you want to listen to you can turn it off it's not that big of a deal but you know this article goes out of its way to kind of make it look like it's just a male problem which is absolutely annoying anyway we continue let's read the article so it says tizan robertson a student from california state university northbridge was approaching one year of an on again off again dating with a co-worker when she came to the realization she would eventually announce to her followers on twitter my biggest mistake in life so far was dating a man with a podcast mr robertson 24 began seeing him in tw december 2021 she was he was 35 at the time and had dreams of being a social media influencer she recalled they both worked at amazon warehouse near um, their home in lancaster california their situation ship as she aptly called it was very embarrassing but she continued to date him until january of this year it's funny that you use the term situation ship to describe basically you know um, hooking up with somebody casually um, a term that was coined from podcast and it's also funny the judgment that people have with this right this lady or this person is dating somebody who they were both you know at the same level in terms of what they were doing occupation wise working in amazon warehouse but because he had a podcast suddenly you're much better than him when you're both working at the same place it's absolutely insane it continues i knew he had a podcast but i never listened to it i was like okay I like this man. I'm already ignoring his social media presence. I'm just going to forget he had a podcast. Things were fine when they were together as long as Mr. Robertson didn't think about his extra curriculums until one day he sent her a link to his show inviting her to listen and share her thoughts. What she heard turned her off. That's the mistake that he made. I don't think in my entire time I've ever personally messaged anybody to listen to my show. It's already embarrassing enough having a podcast, right? It's kind of lame. It's kind of corny. It's already embarrassing embarrassing enough sharing links to it online kind of lame kind of corny it's already embarrassing clipping stuff and listening to yourself speak and getting rid of ums and ahs and editing this and designing a thumbnail sharing stuff on social media that's already bad enough as it is the last thing i want to do is send somebody a direct link and tell them what their thoughts are and fundamentally not to be that guy but i don't care what people's thoughts are like this is part of the reason why this stuff works I think the genesis of, for me, especially the early days of listening to Joe Rogan back in the day when it first started, when he was like, doing it on a couch, why that stuff was special was because 
they were uninformed and just shooting from the hip. The moment you start asking for feedback and you start asking for direction on how you should approach certain things, I think it kind of loses its magic. For better or worse, just present who you are on front of, you know, of the camera or in front of the microphone. If people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. But it shouldn't be, you know, a thing where you're trying to like, you know, get feedback and this and that. It's just weird. It's just honestly weird. And it's also a thing of like, I wouldn't, I hate kind of like invading somebody's time and basically take, you know, basically trying to um, put, them, put them in a position where they have to review it. Like kind of, you know, cannibalizing their time. is just a bit annoying that way. I just, I've never liked that sort of stuff personally. But again, I come from the world of promoting, you know, at clubs and stuff. So I think because I was never the guy to say, hey, come to my club night. I'm also not going to be the guy who's going to be like, hey, listen to my podcast. It's like, whatever. It continues. Mr. Robertson, it was... Um, for Miss Robinson, sorry, it wasn't just the content of the man's podcast, but he had, but no, sorry, let's continue again. For Mr. For Miss Roberts, why I keep so why I say Roberts, so it's Roberts. For Miss Robertson, it was just it wasn't just the content of the man's podcast, but that he had one at all. Like many other women, she associates the form with a certain kind of man, one who is endlessly fascinated by his own opinions, <laughs> loves the sound of his own voice, and isn't the least bit shy about offering unsolicited opinions on masculinity, sexuality, and women. Many women have taken to social media to mock just the kind of programming and the men who made it. I've always, just to be certain, I've always had an issue anyway with a certain subject of podcast or content that exists out there, especially within the black community that is obsessed with sex, um, masculinity, women, relationship stuff. Like, it's just annoying. They speak about the same thing. Like, I've heard the topic around who should be paying for the first date so often that legitimately I might game of thrones myself you know I might mean? walk out the window just go you know whatever will be will be it's just too much and they just keep regurgitating it but for whatever reason those podcasts do numbers they're successful so clearly there's a market for it but for me personally I hate it and I think it's horrible and it applies and now it's, it's become like a widespread thing so it's just a black thing like white podcasts whatever they are you know there's a tired podcast on barstool sports that just center and just girls sitting around talking about dating for like you know 400 episodes plus it's like how much of this can one person take but regardless it is what it is but i find the idea that this is how you encapsulate all guys that have podcasts really annoying because essentially i feel like having one anywhere podcast you have to be somewhat intrinsically curious you have to be somewhat fascinated by humanity by society by technology by culture because you want to talk about things you see stuff you recognize patterns and trends you may be able to link certain things together and you can speak about them you don't just sit in it's just okay today i had a date i tried to finger blast this girl in the kitchen she said no and then i went back on tinder you're not just speaking about that you're like maybe speaking about things that you spoke about in the conversation maybe stuff you saw in the papers maybe something you overheard that's where good ones come across and i really do kind of um detest this idea that it's all just you know fast by your own opinions not really you're maybe fascinated with other people's opinions and how that may inform yours but it's not just a solely just okay i'm gonna just spout off the hip and just oh it's just all me all me that's nonsense it continues on tiktok hashtags like men with podcast gather videos of mostly women using a beard filter to shout at the right the sorts of things male podcast hosts say such as why a man why as a man you're born the mouth well why as a man are you born in the month of February? Or that's the problem with women who read. Others have called on them to put their mics down and get a job. But the once booming podcast industry is currently back on foot. The host's reputation for self-important mansplaining, having long since caught up with them, is the podcast bro officially a person non gratis today's dating landscape. In my opinion, this whole thing of like women doing this thing with a beard thing, I think it's really funny. There's one girl in particular who does it amazing, this black girl who kind of does these like satirical spins and skits on guys that have podcasts and she smashes it. If you know what I'm talking about, you know it. I think her, her character, that's the, the guy, he's got like a bald head and a beard and then she kind of has this conversation on the podcast and then she plays like a, a like a woman pick me on the podcast where she kind of comments on everything the guys are saying. It's super hilarious. But I think this is really all founded or it's on the kind of foundation of bullshit because essentially this is a dating thing most of these people who are complaining especially the women i understand where it's coming from because there's a certain type of it's maybe like a fuckboy type of person who maybe speaks about these certain topics about women about relationship that has podcasts and maybe it's a bit of a turn off but fundamentally let's not also go away from the fact of if most of these guys who are doing these pods that are very kind of divisive and kind of put down certain genders and certain people and whatnot 
if they were successful as Joe Rogan, if they made millions and millions and just talking into a microphone, a lot of these people's opinions will can definitely change. I feel like a lot of it has to do with this kind of not meme. It's kind of this um, it's kind of this caricature they have in their head of a guy who's got a podcast, who sleeps on the mattress on the floor with a TV and a controller, who doesn't have any cutlery, who eats on paper plates, and you know that kind of dude who doesn't have a job, whatever maybe, and just records a podcast with ten listeners. That's the thing they have, but. I think the conversation changes immediately if that person's successful. It kind of shifts the whole thing, which then, you know, negates the entire argument because now you're saying if your podcast is popping and it makes you money, I can forgive stuff. But if it's not, then suddenly I'm judging you because of it, um, which I think is absolute bullshit. But it continues. In interviews in a handful of men who work or have worked on podcasting, some have said um, they've had come across romantic prospects who view their profession as a potential red flag. And even among those who haven't, some preemptively adjust their representation of themselves to make a clear distinction. And it's funny that they say that because I remember once a particular girl that I was trying to see early, early on, maybe many, many years ago, um, didn't want to speak to anymore because she found out that I was a fan of Jordan Peterson. Before Jordan Peterson went crazy off the benzos and all that malarkey and started to think his shit don't stink and was shouting at, you know, fat girls for having the for having the flipping nerve to wear bikinis and stuff and he just went off the reservation. Now Jordan Peterson is a caricature of himself and it's really sad to see what he's kinda of turned into. But I was a fan of his before. When Twelve Rules for Life came out, you know, I went to the I went to a flipping um I went to a talk he did somewhere in London. I forgot where it was specific. I think it was like a round theatre or something. I think the name of it. And it was great. And around that time, he was doing loads of videos on online, on YouTube that were going viral. And people were really loving it. His interviews were going crazy. He had an interview with that woman on Channel 4 that she was, you know, whatever. That back and forth they had was really good, blah, blah, blah. And I was a fan of it. And I guess I was sharing a lot of the stuff online because, you know, when you first discovered Jordan Peterson for the first time and you're one of the first people to discover and you're sharing the stuff online and you're still lecturing back in the day, you feel kind of like, I'm going to some to share it. Little did I know, there was a whole community of people who had a complete opposite opinion of me, who did not like him at all, thought he was dangerous, thought he was um, going to, you know, negatively affect culture and whatnot. And they were very vocal about it. So when this girl found out I did, I liked Jordan Peterson, she basically read, you know, wrote me a massive sort of paragraph, basically detailing why she didn't like it. And I think I replied back about something, something along the lines of, oh, you should be open to different conversations and stuff. And that's when I found out, about the culture war through that conversation because she just didn't want to listen she just wasn't having it there was no like two sides of the argument it's this guy's wrong he's bad for society i'm cutting you off don't ever talk to me again and since then you know it's not been it's not been good right let's just say i may be blocked <laughs> so um that kind of taught me or that kind of showed me oh this did, like i didn't know this existed i thought in general if you didn't like something you just didn't listen to it but it didn't inform your decision of like who you cooked up with or who you saw because it's just such a non important it's just such an unimportant thing like if you don't like i don't know if you don't like jay-z or something right what, what you're not gonna date somebody it's just it just didn't make any sense to me why that would be a defining part as opposed to whether or not you have compatibility whether or not you get on but hey everyone has a decision everyone's fine with their choices it is what it is i can understand how annoying that may be in that regard but i just find the idea of judging anybody based on what they listen to or what they read or what they watch very bizarre in my i just find it incredibly bizarre incredibly so it continues. A Tyree Rush, a 29-year-old podcast producer in Atlanta, said he makes it a point not to list his professional his dating app profiles. Instead, he usually works, says he works in digital media. I was on a date in Chicago, and I said that I had to do this digital strategy at first, so she kept pressing. It was like, actually, I produce podcasts. Now maybe it's because I lied and said that I did digital strategy first and that she was not onto it, but I just think when she heard the podcast, it was a cause of concern for her. Maybe it should be. Maybe women should, you know, if you see a microphone, if you see a Rode microphone and a Focusrite, you know, audio interface, maybe you should run a mile, depending. There should be, red flags maybe should exist in dating, of course, certain things. But I just, there's a part of me that just thinks that just because someone records their voice, you know, and shares it to people or records clips and does videos online, I just find that weird. But maybe the stigma around it is the same sort of stigma with DJing and being a photographer, right? Some people, I I'm, I'm guess there's some women out there think if you're a photographer, especially fashion photographer, you're a creep. If you're a DJ, you know, it's looks like a bit corny, especially if you're not, again, and I think a lot of it, just think about it now, has to do with their success level. Because if, if you're a photographer, taking pictures of local fots and baddies and babes in ends and just sharing them on your Instagram account, it's not the same thing, right? Everyone looks at it like, oh, that's trashy, that's crap, you're a creep. But if you're 
taking pictures of like Lily Rose Depp and shit and you're taking pictures at, behind the scenes at London Fashion Week, suddenly you're a man of culture. Suddenly you're, you've got a little bit more of a panache on the end of your name and whatnot. It just depends on your success level and what you're doing it as. Um, but anyway, I would never list my occupation as a fucking podcast or a DJ. I mean, that's not, it's just, just insane to me. Anyway, you have to have a bit of self-respect for yourself. It continues. Screen of the podcast bro archetype has also appeared in other areas of pop culture and Netflix comedy. You people, Ezra, a white broker paid by Jonah Hill, reveals to his date that his dream job is to do hip hop culture podcast full time, which is first met with laughter, followed by quickly judgment and concern. Miss Rush also worked in Marvel, iHeart Media and the podcast network Wondery and said he understood the wariness. It's like a new chivalry of etiquette that we're just trying to figure out. Logan Mendoza 23 is one of the hosts of the Sweet Talk a video podcast on YouTube and he said they often get direct messages from men who enjoy their content which he described mostly as guy talk and debate he said that he didn't consider sweet talk to be like um, some of the more offensive shows at the end of the day you want to entertain the listeners and viewers so you do that um, so you're going to have to say some crazy stuff Miss Mendoza says sometimes we'll say some stuff but we don't really fall in line with it sometimes we'll disagree on topic just to have that argument with each other on the podcast and have different point of views I've never liked that I've never liked just being a contrarian just to kind of get views and clicks and whatever it may be I think that's one of the reasons also that kind of turn me off to Joe on a podcast because they just would or Joe would just un, you know just for the sake of of arguing and creating content will just be a contrarian and will just kind of you know argue the other side or whatnot just to kind of you know get the other guys to debate it more i don't think that's necessary i think the whole point of a podcast because it's long form and because you're not really edited you don't have any people giving you notes you can be a bit more free of what you say and just kind of lay it bare why would you then decide to kind of artificially create this tension where that doesn't need to be there say what you feel feel what you mean and then kind of go from there Another person, Raymond Pagg, a 31-year-old podcaster producer and a sound designer who works mostly on science shows, said he never personally experienced romantic rejection because of his profession. In fact, he said it was often the point of entry of the conversation. Yeah, because you do a scientific podcast. So you see a difference. This kid does a scientific podcast, right? Um, NPR type thing, a documentary type thing, inquisitive, insightful, learning, the kind of thing you share on your Instagram stories because you want people to double tap heart, you know, on it or whatnot. But he's not talking about, you know, messy stuff. He's not talking about about who's dating who because of that it's more value because obviously it makes him look intelligent it makes him look cultured it makes him look worldly whatever and about a month ago he started seeing someone new but while he was single he presented himself as an audio producer as somebody who has also worked on radio he felt the audio label encompassed both jobs i feel like i've been able to position myself away from the terrible man corner of podcasting he said ah oh, he's one of those guys eh? man corner aren't you a man like, what are you talking about? Um, Mr. Pag said he didn't know many people who'd work in audio who will call themselves podcasters, though, and given an appealing idea, anybody in a podcaster. It could be mean that you work in American life or that it could mean that you've recorded podcasts with a bunch of your friends talk about the latest news of the week um, or that them socialistic stuff. Okay, it's one of those dudes. But anyway, another thing I'll quickly mention, too. This also made me think. The, the, the first time I heard this phrase ever uttered, you know who I heard it uttered from? You know who I heard it uttered from the first time ever? From this woman. Um, and I think ever since then, right? Ever since then, I've never been a fan of her work ever since. This artist called Japanese Breakfast. Um, and she appeared on How Long Gone, one of my favorite podcasts. And she was a real B-I-T-C-H, I felt like, to the boys. Now, don't get me wrong. Chris Brack is specifically on that podcast is the guy that is kind of, you know, you kind of have to learn to love him. He's an acquired taste, a contrarian, um, just somebody that has some really insane opinions, um, doesn't necessarily like to be inquisitive about certain things, then gets balls deep in certain things. Just a really hard guy to kind of like. But, you know, if you like him, you like him. If you don't, you don't. But I get it. But still, she was very dismissive of the podcast, even though she was doing it to kind of promote her new album and just was acting just really weird in general. I didn't like it. And she uttered the term around podcast bro, and all this sort of stuff a lot. And I think, you know, she had this really, I think she mentioned something about her boyfriend maybe being one too, or I don't know. It was just weird. I didn't like it. And oddly enough, because I say all that what I've said about myself and maybe how I find the idea of women not dating certain guys because their podcast really idiot, really dumb. But oddly enough, I have to also confess I was a fan of her music beforehand. And again, you know, for the most part, I try not to read artist interviews because I feel like sometimes you read an artist interview and they come across like a cunt and you're like, I can't listen to it anymore. So I try to avoid it. But because I was a big How Long Gone fan, I just auto played the podcast, just listened to it. But since then, I have never listened to her music again. 
she, she said what she said about podcast bros and she just came across dismissive didn't really and i think even she didn't even share that she was on the podcast on the social media i'm pretty sure i was being a bit petty and i kept checking her socials she didn't share that she was on there she just completely just pretended like it didn't happen kind of thing and i took that I took that personally, as Michael Jordan will say, and I haven't listened to her ever since. So I can somewhat understand these girls who are like, you know what, if you've got a podcast, if you've got a road mic at home and you're ranting and raving about Sweetie or, you know, JT and P Diddy and stuff, or you have some insane opinions about who should pay for the first date, I understand if you don't like it. But in general, I just feel like there's idiosity on both sides of the aisle. Men and women are just getting on these podcasts saying the most nonsense things just for attention. And it really is becoming um, a bit of a mad one, in my opinion. People's comments saying, oh, Jeffy Breakfast is a mid anyway. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Um, Uche is saying it's probably the same as Strife as dating a comedian because either situation in your personal life can and will be used as content in one way. Yeah, true. You know what, um, Uche? That I have more of a reason, that I have more understanding for. If somebody, especially a woman, said, hey, I just don't want to date a podcast because I don't want to end up being a conversation piece for a podcast of like, oh, we had an argument about the shower or we had an argument about who didn't wash the toilet or about who didn't buy this or something. I don't want to end up as one of those kind of bits and bits in your pod that I haven't that I have a lot of sympathy for, especially if it's like presented as like all the time. I'm the one in the wrong sort of thing. If you're a woman, I get it. That has more credence to it. But the idea that just because you have a microphone in front of your face that you just chat shit is crazy in my opinion, especially because, you know, some people just do podcasts, you know, sitting there just recording albums, not talking about anything personal at all. So I don't know. I find it odd. 